Well, I don't know if you can tell um, what this is from out there. You may need to zoom in on this if you're online. Um, this is, this is uh, my laptop. And there are times when, when this thing just drives me nuts. You know, just <laughs> amen. <laughs> I finally get an amen out of somebody. It, it, is, it, is, it is an amazing tool um, for, for the work. Um, it, is, it is at the same time the most amazing and wonderful tool while being a, a source of aggravation and disgust. I, I was thinking it sounds like having a teenager in the house again. Sorry. The other, the other day, it just, it just didn't want to get going. And it, it, I, it didn't crash, but I actually think that it taunted me. <laughs> I, I cajoled it. I talked to it. Uh, finally, I just decided to give it a warm boot. You know, I, I don't mean that kind of boot. It's, it's, you, you force a, re, a reboot or a restart. And, and, and there are times when we all need a warm boot. For most of us, and I'm including myself here, it, it occurs to me that this is what faith is for a lot of us. What, what we like to say is that we have faith and we live it out every day. Yet there are times when we feel that our faith just isn't enough. And so, so we ask why. Why, why don't I have more faith? And how do I get more faith? We, we heard this morning the, the definition of, of faith. Carol shared, shared this from Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is confident in what we hope for and assurance for what we do not see. Now, for me, that sounds like an awful lot like turning on a computer. We take it for granted when it works for us. But when it doesn't work, when it doesn't meet our expectations, we go into crisis mode and we give it a warm boot. And we sit and we think, why? Why don't I have more faith? There's a, there's a story about Mother Teresa and, and responding to a, a friend's question about her own faith, her own daily faith. And it happened to come at a particularly difficult time in, in her ministry, but she responded in a, in a vulnerable way. Here's what she said. You ask what faith, what is faith in daily life? I don't know. But what I do know is that God is truly love and fidelity, that he loved us into being that he is love. Pray for me, she said, so that I may love him. For to lose intimacy with God would be worse than to live on the streets. Billy Graham once said that faith can only exist in a world where faith is difficult. And, and as I look around, you can agree or disagree with me, I, I find a world that is very difficult difficult. If we're honest with ourselves and with one another, we, we confess that we really don't have much faith. What the writer of Hebrews refers to as that active attitude of confidence in God's greatness and God's goodness. We pray, but with little enthusiasm. We worship, but with little expectation. We hope, but we're never quite sure what to hope for or in whom to place our, our hope. So we do what we usually do in situations like that. We try just a little bit harder to excavate just a little bit more faith in our hearts. We dig deep into our souls and we try and try to feel something. 
You know, too much of what I read about worship lately is has to do with the experience. How do people feel in, in worship? And if we're, it, it's, it's if, if, if we just sing better songs or more songs, if we just sing louder or longer, we'll have more faith. And, and when, when that doesn't work, we end up kicking ourselves and calling ourselves spiritual failures. Our faith, or what's left of us, left of it, fails us, and life just gets more complex. And everything hits us at once again, and, and, and we say, something is wrong. There's a great story about the Apostle Peter in, in Matthew 14, where what I love about the story is if, Matt, or Peter actually walks on water. There's a time when he actually walks on the water. It's Jesus who walks on the water toward the disciples, and he gives each of them in the boat an invitation. He, he literally says, come on in, guys, the water's fine. And, and Peter's the only one to accept that, that invitation. And, and even though there's like five or six sermons in, in this story, a, a key for, for this every time, that is, as long as Peter keeps his focus on Jesus, he, he can walk on the water. But as you know, if, if you're familiar with the story, when, when, he, when he looks down at the storm, at the rocky sea, and he takes his focus off of Jesus, what happens? He starts to sink. Faith is about keeping your focus on Jesus, not just during your storm, but before and after your storm. Matthew 17 tells the story of, of, of Jesus, I, I would imagine, it seems like it was a time when maybe his patience was wearing thin with his disciples. But he, he told them this. He said, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, just that little bit of faith, you can move mountains. Now, personally, I've, I've struggled with this story. I, I didn't like it for a long time because there were times in my, in my life where, where I didn't even have this, this little bit of, of faith. But I remember last week, I remember when my friend said this, and I, and I wrote it down, and I kept it in my journal. My friend Rob, when he, when he said, if you're struggling with doubt, it means that you're taking your faith seriously. And I think for us this week, if, if you're struggling with, with more faith, it means that you're taking it seriously. Because, and it took me a long time to recognize this, when Jesus talked about faith the size of a mustard seed, I wonder if he was teaching just the opposite of how we normally read this. Perhaps what Jesus was saying was that we, just like Peter and the disciples in the boat, we don't have any faith, any faith apart from Jesus. Otherwise, all we would need is just a simple mustard seed's worth. And we can move mountains. We could walk on water. And I wonder if, if Jesus is trying to teach us, number one, to pay attention. Because faith does not come from us. Faith is not something we manufacture on our own. Faith is not something we just create more of, that we pull more out of the shelf and open a can of faith. And the Apostle Paul has a handle on this. Carol shared this this morning from Ephesians 2.8. He wrote, for it is by grace. There's that word. It is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from ourselves. It's not something we do. It is what? The gift of God. Not a gift, but the gift of, of God. Faith in Jesus is faith as a gift from Jesus. Faith and trust go hand in hand. Faith is not something we manufacture. Faith is the gift of a gracious and loving and merciful 
God. Think about this. Instead of worrying about why you don't have more faith, take some comfort and be encouraged today in knowing that Jesus already has all the faith you will ever need. And so why, why don't we have more faith? It's a good question. But I think there's a better question. Why don't we experience more of Jesus' faith in our lives? Why don't we experience more of his faith in our lives? Now, the, the, the response to that may surprise you. The reason we don't experience more of Jesus' faith in our lives is because we don't ask. Having faith means that we do something, actually, we do something countercultural. Having faith means that we do something actually un American. It means that, that we give up our trust. We, 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 we give up control. We don't give up our trust. We give up our control. Having faith, having faith means that we give up control to Jesus. Henry Nouwen tells the story, he, what, a lesson that he learned of trust from a trapeze artist. The acrobat said this, the flyer does nothing and the catcher does everything. I have simply to reach out my arms and, and hands and wait for him to catch me and pull me safely over the apron. The flyer must trust with outstretched arms that his catcher will be there for him. And then he writes, now one writes this, in the great trapeze act of salvation, Jesus is the catcher. And we are the flyers. We trust, period. We rely solely upon Jesus' ability to catch us. As we trust him, a wonderful thing happens. We fly. Or, for Peter, we walk on water. Jesus' record in this is perfect. He's never dropped anyone. And he will not drop you. His grip is sure. And his hands are open. Faith is about placing yourself entirely in his care. So instead of feeling like faith losers, and instead of trying just a little bit harder to have more faith, I invite you to come to Jesus today and every day and ask him to fill you with his faith. And just like Peter and Mother Teresa, we find that we are able to face the storms faithfully after all.